I've got four things to be able to help you start to go down that healing process and to start getting grounded of which direction you're gonna go, how you're gonna heal, how you're gonna develop. How do I get over a narcissistic relationship? Do you ever wonder that? Do you ever think of what do I actually do to get past this? How do I get past this? This is different. This isn't like the normal breakup that I normally go through. This isn't like something where I broke up, I had a couple months, I like healed, I moved on. Like, no, this has been like months. This has been years and I'm still thinking about this person. They're still stuck in my head. They're still taking up real estate in my life because I can't seem to let that go. How do I get over this? How do I move past it? Sometimes it feels like I'm obsessing over this person. I can still want to reach out to them. I still want to contact them, even though every time I've done that, I've gotten hurt, I've gotten used, I've gotten abused. And I'm just confused. What am I actually doing? Like, how does this make sense? When I, when I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, wait a second, this isn't what I need to do. But then I go out and do it every single time. It's almost like I'm addicted to this person. And then I get frustrated and then I get pissed off and then I get mad because like they did this and now I'm still stuck and I'm here I'm broken and like not doing too well. And they're out living their best life with another person. Like, what does this make sense? How can I get over this? Do you ever ask yourself any of those questions? Are any of those, some of the thoughts and the ideas that pop in your head that you're like, wait a second, like this just does not make sense. How do you get over a relationship with a narcissist? If you're new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this platform to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. To help people understand what narcissism is and then help them grow as they continue to move forward in their life and change and develop into someone that's completely new, completely transformed, completely on another level. No longer that person before that got hurt and abused and feels like their self-confidence and their worth are taken away and stripped from them and they no longer know who they are, but instead helping people identify what's going on, who they are, and how to grow, heal, develop, and change to be happy, healthy, and whole. If you wanna talk sometime, click on the link down below, go to rawmotivations.com, join a community of people, download the NARC app, N-A-R-C, N-A-R-C, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. It's on Apple, Google Store. I would love to be able to have you be able to just download that, get involved with over 4,000 people who are there understanding and learning, growing, developing of what narcissism actually is. Seek advice, join our weekly lives, our monthly coaching, all different types of things that we'd love to be able to involve you with. If you're on any of the platforms or if you listen on the podcast today, thank you so much. Like, rate, review, subscribe, follow. Just look us up anywhere. Raw Motivations, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, all that. But when you're thinking about, and once you get out of a relationship with a narcissist, that idea switches of like, how do I get over the narcissistic relationship? I've got four things I wanna to talk to you today. I've got four things to be able to help you start to go down that healing process and to start getting grounded of which direction you're gonna go, how you're gonna heal, how you're gonna develop. Four things of how to get over a narcissist, narcissistic relationship. Number one, define truth. You see, so many times when you're getting out of a narcissistic relationship, you've been lied to, you've probably been cheated on, you've been gaslit, you've been manipulated, you've been future faked, you've been all these different types of things that have distorted your reality of what's actually true. And as a result, you're struggling with the concept of is this fantasy or is this reality? What I remember, is it true or is it false? Is it fable, is it fiction? What is actually going on? And a lot of people struggle with the idea of defining the truth defining what's real in the relationship because they sit back and they're like wait a second did they love me did they care they said they did and this is where we develop cognitive dissonance the idea of holding two opposing thoughts in your mind and not knowing which one to pick not knowing which one's true so you have to go back and you have to look at how did this person demonstrate love demonstrate care demonstrate faithfulness demonstrate respect think of it this way after the relationship Thinking of if you're going out west and you see the Rocky Mountains looming far ahead, the mountain range, and you know there's multiple mountain ranges all there. But when you're far away and you're looking down at the mountain range, all you can see is the 
the mountains, the first mountain there, and then anything past that, all you see is like the little, the peaks of the mountain, anything that juts up over the horizon. And as you look far down, all you see is all these peaks down the horizon. The thing that you can't see because of depth perception, because you're so far away, is the pits and the chasms in between each peak. When you're looking back on a narcissistic relationship, you start to struggle with fantasy versus reality, cognitive dissonance, what they say versus what they do. And you start to look back on the relationship and all you see is the high points. You see the peaks sticking through the multiple ranges and you don't see the pits that are actually in between of how deep and how low they get. And if you got in an airplane and you flew above the mountains and you looked down and you got to see, hey, look at all those mountain ranges and you see the peaks, are actually these tiny moments left with these giant chasms in between. Because what you'll do is you'll latch on to one thing. You'll latch on to one thing that you're like, wait a second, this was a good date. This was a great moment. This was a connecting time. And you forget 30 minutes before or an hour and a half later that actually debunked and devalued the whole time together. But oftentimes our minds want to latch onto that one positive thing because it's a lot easier to hang on, hang on to that positive thing than it is to admit that it really wasn't that positive. It was just a tiny breadcrumb. So the first thing is you have to define truth. The second thing is you have to start to journal and meditate. If you don't do that already, it's a great practice and I would highly, highly recommend it. The reason why is because you not only have to define your truth, you also have to remember it. Because again, if you're looking back on the past, it's going to be easy to be like, wait a second, fiction or reality, fantasy or fiction, what's actually going on here? And over a period of time, you'll start to think, it wasn't that bad. They didn't hurt me that much. They didn't abuse me that much. Like maybe it's me and you'll start to doubt all the things. So when you journal, you write down to keep clear because that crazy making is so real. It makes you think, wait a second, this actually wasn't that bad. Maybe it was me. Maybe I'm the narcissist. Maybe I'm the toxic one. They're living this way. I'm living this way. And it starts to make you discount the things that happen inside the relationship. So first with that is journal. The second thing that I mentioned was meditate. Okay. Meditate to release stress and to ground yourself. This is super important because otherwise you will still be in that high stress, high adrenaline state coming out of that relationship. You need to recalibrate yourself. You need to recalibrate how your body is acting, your nervous system, your anxiety, all different types of things. Cause you don't know with the adrenaline or with when the shoe's going to drop, when the hammer's going to drop, because that's what you've been used to. So as you get away, you have rumination, you have all the different chemicals in your body, like readjusting, realigning because of the fact you're getting out of an addictive relationship and you need to journal things to remember it. You need meditation to be able to help with that. We've got a fantastic release meditation done by Brennan Bachard. We've got that linked inside the app. Also in like our monthly coaching, we've got Mel Robbins with like the high five challenge. It's one thing that we like mention to people like, Hey, this is a great practice to help get you centered with your nervous system and start the day with a calm center. So number one is to find truth. Number two, journal and meditate. Number three, identify your triggers. What's a trigger? A trigger can be anything. A trigger can be sights, sounds, smells, places, things, people, like places you go where you're like, we ate here, we did this, you know, that's the same color popsicle I got with a person. Like it could be anything. Okay, it could be anything. So don't feel bad if it's something small or it feels like it's something stupid. It can literally be anything. But identify the triggers that are sidelining you and pushing you back towards the narcissist. A trigger will make you react. And oftentimes it'll sidetrack you. It'll sideline you. It'll ruin part of your day. It'll put you in a, an emotional funk in all different types of things because that trigger still has an aspect of controlling you. And when that trigger goes off, it activates an emotion. It activates a thought, a feeling that's going on. And that emotion might be like sadness or it might be like anger or frustration or whatever, but it activates an emotion. And as soon as that emotion pops off, you have the option to ascribe a feeling to it. Of what am I going to attribute? What power am I going to give to this trigger, to this emotion that I'm experiencing? And a lot of times people give it way too much power than what it's worth. But they don't really know that but they don't really see that. But that step there is you have to be able to identify them. You have to be able to see what it actually is. Like this is causing me to experience this emotion, which is making me feel like this. Like that's literally the steps that we have to go through to be able to figure out what's going on underneath the surface. 
Number four, and the last one is rewire your mind. Doing that by the triggers, diving deep to understand. You see, everyone is telling themselves a story. And oftentimes the story that you're telling yourself has been modified and molded over years. And maybe that's from early childhood development. Maybe that's from getting involved with, you know, other partners, other friends. Maybe that's with your, with growing up, like the family system that you were a part of. Maybe that's your religion or your education or whatever it might be. But like growing up, you have people in your life that develop a perception and give you the idea of this is the story that you're supposed to believe. But ultimately you're the one that's actually writing your story. You're the one that's describing the story in your life on a day-to-day basis. And my job when I work with people is to help them get underneath the triggers, the emotions, the feelings to figure out what the story is and help you actually change that story. Because if you believe the same story, oftentimes a fantasy, oftentimes the peaks of those mountains, you're like, wait a second, this is a great story. This person loved me, but they never demonstrated it. And the more we're able to help people on a day-to-day basis get underneath the surface and understand to identify their triggers, to help rewire their mind by changing the story, that's what it comes down to the fact that you can change your story, which will change your life. So if you're wondering today, how do I get over a narcissistic relationship? One, define your truth. Number two, journal and meditate. Number three, identify the triggers that are controlling you. And number four, rewire your mind. Because as soon as you can identify what the story you're believing is, and you can work on replacing it, rewiring it with the correct story that's built on the truth, that's when you can be free. Change your story today, change your life.